Okay guys, here's a little tutorial on how to fish a wire. In case you didn't know how to do that. This is gonna be a short video. Okay, I got a light switch over here. I wanna run a switch lake from there, through the floor, across the basement, and up to my other outlet, because that outlet is hot all the time. I wanna make it switched. And um, this one over here already has a switch lake. We're gonna switch half of it. There's already wires over there, so I just have to rewire that one. But how do you do that? Well, what I did from experience is you get yourself a long screw in your drill. And if you notice, I ran a three inch screw right close to the wall. And then I figured I had to go in about another two inches. So I did the same over here. And I uh, went down to the basement and I found them. And what I did is I knocked out the knockout in the back of my box in the bottom, you can see it there. And I tied it on a heavy string with a nut. I went downstairs with a coat hanger with a hook bent in it, stuck it up through the drill hole, waggled it around and hook my string. We'll go down and look at that. Uh, this is a very, very short video today. I'll show you how I'm going to rewire these. The problem is, is um, this one down here is switched, but it only has a single pair of wire to it. So there's, well, and I don't want it switched. So I'm just going to tie those back into the circuit hop. Um, then there's a switch leg going over to the one I showed you on the other wall. There's no switch leg to the one on this other wall that I want to switch. So I got to run a new wire from that switch box, as I said over there. So now that I've run my screws in, let's go down and, and look for the string. Well, let's put the string down through this one. Okay. Okay, actually what I figured out here, guys, is this wire coming into the switch must be the only hot one on the top right because it switches two switch lakes. Well, the wire comes off the switch and goes to the other two black wires. All the neutrals are always attached together, so they don't really matter. We're talking about black wires. So this one that goes down to the outlet, we want to hook up hot. So we really only need to run our our jumper wire into that outlet because I'm going to change these wires around so that outlet is hot. And then we'll go from that outlet down to the, the switch leg across the basement to that outlet over there. Now let's go down into the basement where I drilled my hole up through and uh, fish it out. So here's the drill. I used a long uh, 14 millimeter bit. When I put my screw down through from upstairs, it came out right over here in the corner. I don't know if you can see that drill hole in that yellow screw. So I just drilled a couple inches inbound of that screw and bingo, we were in the wall. Now when you go through into the wall, you don't want to like drive it through six inches and waggle it around. There may be wires in there still. You don't want to hook up with them. You can see where I got the other one up in here already. And my string hanging down. I'll have to fish my wire between the two strings and then pull them up through. Right? Right. All right, let's see if I find my coat hanger here. I had a coat hanger all bent. Okay. Now what I did is I built, bent about a, I don't know, a little less than a half inch loop and I tipped it to the side just a little bit. So as it whirls around in there, it'll want to catch. Well, I'm directly right below the hole. So let's go up in there. Waggle this baby around a little bit and see if we caught anything. Look at that. First try. We got the string. Okay. Now I just have to work my wire from here over to that other uh, hole. Pull it through and I've got my wires run. Well, there's a trick for today. I'm going to show you maybe wiring up the outlets yeah, when I get around to it. wire all the way up here. I screwed up. That one's just going to stay hot all the time. I do need to run out of this box. 
Okay, so somebody's taped these up really well. Somebody was worried about them. There's nothing wrong with that wire. I'm going to use that. figure that out is I'm going to touch one of them to the box and that should create a short. And I've got my multimeter here good old float multimeter I'll put it on beep and if this is the right one, it should beep when I touch ground and the outlet. That was me touching the box at the same time. So I'm betting it must be this one. So we'll touch this one to the box. And I'll go down here and I'll touch the box on the ground. And we get a beep. Okay. So this one with the long leaves. This needs to be hooked up hot. This one needs to be switched. Hot, hot. You gotta add another neutral. And this is gonna be the switch to the one over there. And I can prove that the same way by touching it on here. Okay, I'll do that. I'm gonna show this one to here. And you should hear a beep. I'll do it out of sight. But you should hear a beep. Yep. Proves that that's the wire that goes over there. Alright, see, because there's a ground wire that connects all these metal boxes together for safety. Alright. So... I think I'm going to fish this again down through here because I want the wire to come right up into this box. So I'm going down into the basement and I'm going to fish this wire. You don't need to watch me do that. I'll be back when I get it hooked down. Okay, so I got my string attached. Let's get you over here behind the light a little more. Got my string attached to the wire downstairs. Now what I did is I cut back a couple of the conductors to make it smaller. And
Oops. Tripping over my string here. I'm going to strip this back a bit along the mount. I'm cutting through the jacket kind of right between the conductors just to score it. Gosh, I don't think I even made it through. There we go. Yeah, it used to be these wires were covered with a lot more paper and wrappings and all that stuff, and nowadays they just say screw it. <laughs> That's enough. That's good enough. That's what they say. I'm going to put that clamp right back in. And hopefully she still likes going into that hole. I don't know, we'll see. Ah, pretty buggered up. But I got another box here with a leftover clamp that I saved. Now see, this is really difficult when you can't see where the dang hole is. You don't want to tighten these screws up hard. I did that, I made that mistake once and it shorted out a hot conductor to the box. And I learned my lesson. You just want it snug so it holds that wire from flipping and falling back down in there. Okay, that's good. Now what we got is a ground fluid in this box. And I don't know if I got any ground crimps. If I do, I'll crimp that. I do have some crimps. They're in the bottom of my box of things, of course. All right, we'll have that out. But what's nice about a ground crimp is, is uh, you can just slide it next to another wire and crimp it. Try that ground clip loose. Pull that out and reuse it. the outlet so there we go now my pliers if I can get them in there have the crimper in it and then it's just a curve on one side and a dent on the other or a tip on the other that mashes it all together That's all there is to that. They're attached together. So now I can put this crimp back in there. There's rounds to all these boxes from the other wires anyway. I'm going to clean this wire off a little bit. I'm going to scrape it. 
be the name uh, taping compound corrodes this stuff. Alright. I'm gonna squeeze this guy down a little tighter again. She's just got a big bite. Now how these work. There's a little hook right there. Put your wire in there. Now if they bend them over, some guys do, so I guess I will. If you're gonna buy a uh, Landsman's players, by the way, get clients. You'll never regret it. Or any other electrical tools. the ground wire for our our device, our outlet. Alright. Alright, so everything neutral goes together. There are no switch legs using the neutral, so I gotta take this guy off. All the neutrals are white. Most of the time the, the whites will be white. But there's times when you can use a two-wire conductor to go up to a light and back with what's called a switch leg and um, those times the white wire is the hot one so you gotta be thinking about what you got. Now these are all screwed up. don't like the way these are twisted together so we're gonna untwist them and we're gonna Now I see guys on TV talking all these Wago or Wagos or whatever they are. They're little plastic things with little springy clips in there that pinch your wires together and supposedly make a good connection. That all relies on the internal metal parts of that little connector to carry all the current, doesn't it? Well, in my mind that's not the right way to do it. In my mind you want to wires touching wires twisted tightly together and then your wire nut actually has a spring inside that is tapered and the wire nut body is actually the new ones the wire nut bodies are actually uh, flexible rubber like so what happens is, is they kind of expand and uh, slide over the bundle of wires creating a lot of squeezing force too and therefore I see I got my wines all lined up here and I'm going to twist them together just like that. Now I could leave these for good and they'd never be a problem. I'm going to cut the nubs off the end and I'm going to take a new wire nut this is a Buchanan brand, I believe. Now see how it's, it's got a tapered hole in there with sharp edged spring in there. And you'll watch this nut expand as I push that, twist that over the wire. So not only do we have the wires twisted together, now we have the squeezing force of the spring cutting in and producing even another path for the current to flow. so I don't have to worry about really, because they're the same uh, the, the same uh, uh, what do I want to say? 
same electrical potential as the ground, so there would be no arcing or anything there. It would just be a secondary path, which you don't want, but it's not going to cause any problems. All right, so, so, this is the one I want to rewire to be hot all the time. The one below. I need to strip him just a little more. And I need to add a, a pigtail that I can run to the switch because I need three wires to the switch. I need the hot and I need the two switch legs. Okay, so I cut a piece of wire and left it behind. What did I do with it? There it is. So I need to make a black pigtail, so we'll make it that way. Pull the black out. I know this might be boring to you, so sorry, but just trying to teach those who may want to know how to do this correctly. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing with these wires. The one was switched, but it's not going to be anymore to this one below. It's kind of useless right here by the door because it's just a short wall. There's no place to put a table or anything. I don't know what they were thinking. switch. It's right here. If you back to goodies. It's gotten really dark outside. I have a power to end up to this room. Okay. So here's our delicious little switch. I think you want to push them this way to turn them on? What do you think? You like that? The printing's right side up this, so that's it. The black screws, see how the screws on here are black? And those are brass, those are separate. The black one has a link between it. You see that? Oops, gosh, I've knocked you all haywire here, sorry. Okay, notice that the Hot screws are always black, so we're going to have plenty of room in here. Now these you want to strip about three quarters of an inch. That's my new wire, so I want that to be the bottom one. Because I want the, we're going to put a, a, a Murphy bed in here. And the Murphy bed is going to have indirect lighting attached to the top of it. That's my plan anyway. So I'm bending a hook into the green wire, or the bare wire. There's a special green screw around the chassis of your device. Wrap around the screw and pinch it. See, that's why I want to get this done before the, the painting, because I'm bumping into the walls, I would have smudge marks and marks while I, if I was uh, installing these. So which one's the hot one? <laughs> okay, that's the hot one. Alright, die. 
Well, let's do the bottom switch first. <sighs> Accordion your wires, make a bunch of little Z-bends in them, and that'll help them uh, bend back in the box when you push on the device to get it back in. Yeah, this wire is a little short. Yeah, it's really short, so I'm trying not to dig up the walls. Because i got to paint them still, but I don't want the scratch marks in them. Alright. My special Klein screwdriver that has this special bit to, to made up to these receptacle screws. I'm getting a really good bite. Been in the 80s, all of a sudden it's 39 degrees today and snowing. Welcome to New York. Not New York, New York. I live in western New York, as far from New York City as I can possibly get. I have no desire to visit, visit that place ever. Just gotta hook up the hot side. Now you always want to screw your unused screws in all the way so they're not sticking out like a hot electrode. <laughs> junk that they used back in the 70s. They were approved, but where they junk? Don't ever use them. And you're not supposed to use the outlet to complete a circuit. In other words, the old way was to hook two hot wires and two neutral wires up to your outlet and the power of the circuit flowed through the outlet. Well, they've changed that code. You can't do that anymore. So there's only one wire hot coming into an outlet and one neutral and they're bugged together back in the box. Yes, it's more connections, but that's the way the masters see. So I'm going to pull the wire or the screws out of these just a second so I can get the tape on. I'm going to tape these up. Because I'm going to leave them hanging out while I paint. But I want to be able to reach in here and turn them on and off, you know, and not get a hidey ho. Oh, excuse me. Hidey ho. Hidey ho. Probably three ribs let it stick off the back just a little bit. Alright. Alright, there's one switch wired up. Now, that one over there should be all set to be rewired. And get you guys in there to see that. Okay, so I haven't really changed anything on this circuit except how I'm feeding it. Instead of having I'm just going to knit these off. That's my switch leg right there. Instead of having one wire that comes all the way over from that other switch, I'm going to switch both sides of this. Now that's the same neutral, so technically I can just hook back up to this 
and one hot to this. See, I need to get a hot because I'm going to have one uh, outlet switched and one outlet hot. And that's a nice little convenience item that comes with your... I must have redone these outlets a long time ago. See, now they weren't twisted together, so I don't think I did that. I would have twisted them. So I'm going to check them all. I guess I'll put all the neutrals together now that I'm doing this. I need to make another pigtail of white, which I should have on the other one. Hi to who? Now I like to strip them about an inch when I'm going to twist them together, so. We're just rearranging this out, but that's all. Now I'll see the rest of these two, there's three wires, now they've got these in there wrong too, but there's nothing I can do about it. They've got two wires through the same clamp, I don't know, maybe that passes code. We never did it. One wire per clamp in a box. So I got my insulation shoulders all lined up together here. And that looks like that would use a yellow. With me? Yeah, I do. Okay. I feel a little cold air coming in here. Really nothing I can do about it. Okay, so there's a hot tap up for the the uh, I would say the bottom of the outlet. There's the top. There's our four neutrals. stripped them the same length so what I do is I use my pliers to push the tips back or pull on one to get the tips all even and then give them a good strong wrap and actually I don't need to trim this one because the tips are so perfect now let's see modern decor type outlets. So, you know, see if you look, between these two screws, the only reason you can use two screws is not to continue the circuit, but to make it a two circuit receptacle. You got to break this coupling out of there. Boy, she a bummer. Okay, there we go, it broke. Now see, if you put the two things wired together, that little piece of wire, or that little piece of metal that was bent through there, is what was 
carrying all the current for the whole circuit. So if you're running this in the kitchen and your refrigerator ran through three of those leaks in your outlet, that's why they don't let you do that anymore. <laughs> all right. So what's the controversy is, uh, which way is right side up? Well, I think that way is. So it looks like a little face smiling at you. So let's get our, our wires pushed back. Okay, that's gonna be the switch. That's gonna be the button. Button. Get our push back in there. There we go. That's gonna be the button. The top. It's a little bugger. A strip around here too that I keep kneeling on and hurting my knee. Yowie. Big baby. Get these guys pushed back. There we go. Alright. Now we're good. Now we'll just strip these guys. These guys again, about three quarters of an inch. Now some of the outlets and stuff that you get, let's see. Yeah, see these are push-ins. Don't ever use the push-ins. Never. Never ever. These are all screw. Use the screw terminals. Oh. There we go. Alright, scrape that up a little bit. She's a little tarnished. With ashes and soot. Sorry, I'm old. Be 75 months or something like that. Six months. So that would be 70. So even if the screw's loose, it'll never fall off. Give her a nice, good, snug tightening. <sighs> All right. Now, what did we say? Is it going to be easier to do the bottom first? I think so. be nice when the uh, Murphy bed is in here and the indirect lighting is on the top and you can just turn that on and it'll give it a nice nice ambiance. And there we go. Nice and tight. Ready to rock. I'm not going to pull the screws out of this because I don't want to lose them so I don't want to be a loser. Those were the days. 
these, my friend. I thought they'd never end. <sighs> okay. Now we can paint around them, and then all I gotta do is shove them back and turn the screws. All right. Well, I gotta do this to all the rest of them. But I got the light switch over here is the other difficult one because uh, that one is missing a clamp. And I've got to go downstairs and run the wire. I'm not going to show you how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to nail it across the joists and come and pull it, and hook it to the screen so I can pull it up through the hole. All right? Sound like a winner? I think it does. So we'll see you in a few minutes. All right. Now we're at the uh, outlet on the other side of the room. Now this is a weird box. It's a four inch square box in the wall because they needed something big enough. Because this is a double circuit. You notice the red wire? The red wire feeds this outlet and see the outlet has the bar still in there so it's feeding out to the rest of this circuit. So they got to be bugged together and ran to the top of this. I'm just concerned about the neutrals. This is where the master neutral is. For that box over there and I'm bringing another neutral in. I guess I can just tie them all together but anyway I got my string attached. I get my come on buddy what's the matter here? box out in the garage has the appropriate clamps in it. So hopefully it's the right size screw for the hole. I think it's a number 10. I gotta get my pad. Hold on a second. I gotta kneel in the pad so I don't kill my knees. They're old. <laughs> Yo! feel bad. I'm not slighting you. Don't slice your finger with your razor knife. I'm just cutting the jacket off. So as I said, there's already another hot wire in this box. And it's hot right now because I didn't turn off both circuits. And back in the day, they used to allow you to run circuits that were in opposing phases with one common neutral. And we did that a lot. It saved money. The uh, three conductor wire cost a little less. And you could run two circuits with one wire. You know, we were contractors. That's, we are in the business to make money, so yes, it's the right size screw, thank goodness. Standardization, I guess. And we'll tighten him down. I'm just compressing the spring right now. Now I feel the wire. Okay, just, just tight. Just snug. I wouldn't even say tight. Ah! Ah! I'm getting into the split of tackless. Ugh! All the time here, that sucks. All right, what are you gonna do with this? This box ain't even grounded. Uh, they get grounded 
actually through the the, box, the device is being screwed into the boxes anyway. Of course, if they're not screwed in, there's no ground. Hence the law for having the ground wire. Heat's on it. I don't need the heat on it here. I'm just going to nip these off. Get this thing out of the way. Mm. Great. So I guess I've got a This guy just stays left alone, but I think I'm going to put, I'm going to go turn his circuit off. I'll be right back. I can prove to you that it's probably still hot. I got my little sniffer here. When I get next to a hot wire, the one I'm working on isn't hot. But when I get close to that one, it is. So I'm going to go turn that one off. I'll be right back. I'm getting too old for this crap, guys. Alright, so I'm back. Now this should be done. My wife and I traced it. We had a new panel put in last year. It was in the middle of frigid winter, that's why I didn't do it myself. Okay, he's dead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a new wire nut on here and make sure these are connected well. And they are twisted nice. I just don't like those kind of wire nuts anymore. So we'll just put this guy on there. I probably can ground this box. There's another wire in here somewhere. Oh, it is. This, it does have a ground clip on it. Oh well, it's just double grounded now. <laughs> um, that ground was over there, so I'm just going to let this ground ground the box, and I'm going to snip it off. We're just going to use this ground that goes over to the other box. Okay, so they're both grounded in the circuit in different ways. So, that guy, he can be put back up in the back of the box here somewhere, because he's out of the way for now. He's done. Ground. So I like they could ground the box. That's good. Plus it's got another ground. And that's the hot end. That's got to be tied together. Let's do all the neutrals now. Try to keep track of this stuff. tape on these. That's the old schooler coming through on a lot of these other, older electricians. They used to actually solder the uh, connections. Could you imagine being up in the attic with a lead pot and trying to solder these joints?
made this one real long, so we're gonna work with it. Okay, so this is definitely gonna need a red wire nut because it's uh, five wires. We get these guys kind of wrapped back the way they were. And where you cut those wires with your die or your pliers, they're very sharp, so have fun with that. I'm sure you will. Again, we're gonna push them back so the tips are even. Because we want all the tips of the wires to be caught into the wire nut, see? That's the main reason for that. All right, okay. perfect spiral. on this side. So luckily these four inch boxes so you can push them back to the side. Now that's the switch that's going to be the top of the outlet. These two guys are going to be the bottom. So we're going to cut them off even. We're going to pigtail them. So yeah, it was 80 some degrees a couple days ago, and then this afternoon it was snowing here, so welcome to New York. I guess I said that already. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's beautiful. I think I can cut just a yellow knot on this. I gotta cut that a little shorter. All right. See, they put this four inch box in here because the code does call for You know, more space in the junction box is with the more stuff you have in there. So of course I didn't bring an outlet with me. We gotta do the same thing with this. We gotta nip out the bridge between the two hot screws. So am I just supposed to bend that back and forth or what? Yes, okay, it comes right out easy if you do it the right way. Just twist it back and forth. Easy enough, easy peasy. Screw that gives it a little bit more flexibility, I think, with the wire being kind of on the bottom. <sighs> Tighten the unused screw. Tighten the ground screw. And what we'll 
will do. I don't have all the outlets changed, but I do have this wiring change that I wanted to change. And the new outlets in those boxes. So as soon as I get this wired here, I'll go turn the breakers on. And we'll bring a lamp around and we'll test all the switches the way we want them to work. Alright? Alright. Now I like I leave the bottom outlet hot all the time because a lot of those transformers and stuff, the plugs are polarized and you've got to let them hang down out of the outlet. So I made the top one switched. That's a personal preference, I think. You can make it whatever you want. Okay, guys and gals, I forgot to show you while I did this, but you didn't want to see me do this again. But this is the proper way to pigtail wires in an outlet sequence where there's a wire coming in and a wire going out to the next box. You can't hook, see if you look at the back of this receptacle you'll see where it had the two whites and the two blacks plugged into the receptacle which makes that bar in the receptacle part of the circuit. Well we can't do that anymore. So he's cut off so what I did is I just restripped like I showed you yesterday, cut the wires about an inch, twisted them tight, snipped them off to about three quarters of an inch, put some nice wire nuts on there. Now these will just hook up to my outlet. The outlet doesn't become part of the circuit, it's a branch. I have one more receptacle to do over there, but I believe that's the end of the line, so that'll only have one wire in it, so I can't show you that again. If it is, uh, two wires I'll, I'll show you again. Let me show you how to tuck those back. Now this box has the, both pairs of wires coming in from the top, so I'm letting the wires that are bugged together arc down. I'm going to bend it in the middle, push it up, so it's bent like a Z, you know. And then you can accordion it right back into your outlet box. And the same thing with the, the white wire down to the bottom, bent like a Z, and push back tight out of the way. And there you go. See, they'll be all secure forevermore. All right, guys. Take care. God bless this little, uh, this is Bob's Barn Workshop. And uh, we're going to finish this wiring up. Just wanted to get this done, and then this room gets painted. That'll be another sequence of this uh, remodel. All right. See you next time. I'll tell you.